So do you have a sparrow problem? So do I. Do you have a hosp problem? Hosp? Hosps? Are hosps bothering your house? Are they hostile hosps? <sighs> Don't show hospitality to hosps. Be inhospitable to hosps. Hosps are not your friends. Especially the males. Hi. So today I'm going to show you how to make a super basic, super easy, super effective sparrow trap or a repeating funnel trap. Anyone can do it. Even a girl. This is the Great Battle of the Birds 2017. Hi! Today I'm demonstrating how to make your own repeating funnel trap. First thing you need is a roll of this hardware mesh, or also known as hardware cloth. This is half inch openings, two foot wide by ten foot long roll. The first trap I built was with a two foot wide by five foot long roll. So at, at minimum you will need at least two foot by five feet with half inch openings. So. <laughs> Next thing you're going to need is some wire snips or dice. You'll also need some kind of a marker and a ruler or a measuring tape, which I have over there. You know what that looks like, right? So, also wear gloves because... the squares so that there's sharp spiky points sticking out on both sides of the cuttings. Okay, the first thing is roll out the wire. You can do this on the ground, I did it on the concrete the first time. Roll out the wire until you get anchor it down if you need to. Until you get a piece that is 40 inches long. Leave the width at 2 feet. Oh, this is ridiculous. Your 40-inch piece that we set aside, which is right here. 40 inches by 2 feet. You can see the black, and it goes all the way down, 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 past the blasphemy, and until you get to the 12 mark. So, now I'm going to cut. Now you should have a box that looks like this. That you folded together. See, here is where we had our two inch section, and then with one of the pieces of eight inch, we supplemented the side here of the cage, and then with the other side, we supplemented there. So, all you're going to do is basically see how I secured these hooks on there. You just take some pliers and bend them down so that you can secure the cage and do not close the top yet. See how that's done there? See how I did that? Super simple. If you feel like it's still kind of loose, you can use some of the, the wire that came with the wrapped up roll and secure the edges if you want. Okay, for the funnels, you're going to take your second 8 inch piece, like so. Approximately. House sparrows, also known as HOSPs, capital H O S P, that was introduced in the early 1900s. And we've had a hell of a time getting rid of them since then. So, great job. Great job, the old Western people of the frontier and English people that transported the damn bird over here. Anyways, so, the male HOSPs can cheep 60 to 100 cheeps per hour and unmated males cheep even more. The female cheeps about four to five times per hour, unless there's bad weather, then they cheep even less. Uh, cheep, cheep, cheeps, cheep, cheep, cheeps. The male is the one that's constantly cheeping. The male spends a good 60% of his perching time um, around his nest or on his nest site. Um, they're extremely hostile and aggressive, and they actually bond with the nest site rather than their mate. They've been known to, um, when a mate is killed or is lost, 
they would rather replace the mate than replace the nest. So we have to get them where it hurts. They're also filthy creatures. Hosps will build their nests on top of other birds' corpses, on top of baby birds' corpses, um, on top of all kinds of filth and gore. So they, they don't care, they're not territorial birds, they don't migrate, so they basically sit around your house and make bird babies all year. And they can lay anywhere from five to eight eggs at a time, and they can have anywhere from three to six broods per season. So two adult hosps can multiply to somewhere over 2,500 birds within a year or two. And you can have up to, or more, 3,200, that's 3,200 birds per square mile. So that's quite the infestation. Now I'm cutting that piece of leftover trim lengthwise up the middle. For nothing. Next I'm going to cut a trapezoid shape out of these two 8 by 9 inch squares. I marked half inch in on each side and then drew straight lines from the mark down to the corners, well, angled straight lines, to make a trapezoid figure. Okay, so now you should have a shape that looks something like this. The measurements are six inches, it's eight inches high, and it's nine inches across the bottom, closely. Here's your other shape. Okay, the next thing you wanna do is, you want to gently Fold your tunnels. Not too hard, not too much pressure, or it will bend too far. And then it's not that easy to fix, because once you compromise that wire strength, then back and forth a few times will make it break. So the idea is to make a tunnel shape, like an inverted U. flush with the bottom of the cage and the side of the cage. So this part is going to be on the bottom of the cage. It's going to go in like this. Okay, but the problem is, if you'll notice, this is not totally flush. Well, it's not going to line totally flush once we set it down. See, this, the bottom edge here sticks out a little bit further than the top. So all I did was eyeball it, but basically, basically, make another set of marks. The top should be fine, but if you follow your other marks and just trim it in on the bottom corners, it should be enough to make it come flush. It, like I said, it doesn't have to be exact. The difference, this one I just finished straightening. See? And this one has not been straightened. So the bottom corners on this guy stick out further. So we have to trim those back. Okay, now we're going to put the funnels in the box. I call this death in a box. It's not death in a box, yeah. Okay, so. These funnels are going to go like this. Okay, you take the large end, that's the entrance, and the small end is the exit into the box. So you want to set it down on the box like that. Kind of measure it out. The, large, the larger hole goes to the side of the box, and the smaller hole faces the inside of the box. Okay, now. So now we have funnels in the box. Okay, but the box is not closed yet. Here's the side view of the funnel. Okay, so there's the funnel. Okay, let me show you the other side. Here's the side view. That's the inside. Here's the funnel. So this part here is the entrance. And this is where we need to exactly cut the same shape as the entrance hole. Same as over here. So next, before you cut the openings, I recommend securing the funnel. Get a pair of pliers. And making sure there's no gaps. Start bending your wires so that they hook around the cage. Okay, so now I secured the funnels inside. And what I want to do is, this one here has short spikes. This one, a little bit better, but not long enough. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to cut right at the end of this row, I'll show you, so that I have the longest spikes possible sticking out. Now you should have spikes that look like this. See how the spikes are nice and long? Here's a good shot of the spikes. Here's a spike shot on the other side. Okay, here's the other one. So it looks like that. Let's see. Ta-da! Opening. Now 
not perfect, but, and here is the piece that came out of it. You're going to use the two pieces that you set aside earlier of each. So now what you're going to do is you're going to trim so that we have sharp spikes. Sharp spikes along both ends, long ends. You want to make same spikes on the short side, so all the way around. Right? So what do you do with this piece? Next for the guardrail, you want to cut the bottom spikes. You want to cut the second, third, and fourth. Skip the fifth. So leave the first, the fifth. 10th and 15th. We're relatively similar now. The basic idea is when you stick it in the bottom of the cage, it's going to be easier to hook to the bottom if you don't have so many wire hooks on the bottom. Okay, what you want to do then is fold it in a tunnel shape, just like before. This is the guardrail that you're going to place inside and around the end of your tunnel. So. Find a good spot and anchor it down. There it is. So, now what you want to do is you want to turn these spikes out. Not too much, just a little bit out. Now, next, these spikes you want to kind of stagger both ways, both directions. Like, turn a couple of them out, a couple of them in. This just makes it uncomfortable for the birds to try to sit on or perch, and so they're less likely to figure out how to escape. Essentially, after you finish this next guardrail, you're done. Okay. And now you're done. So here's your trap. Your basic trap. Right? I've tried everything for bait. Um, the sparrows usually like cracked corn and millet, but I was not about to spend any money on them. So I've tried saltine crackers. They like townhouse crackers. Um, but the bomb is thing to bake them with, believe it or not, is top ramen. Dried and top ramen, crunch it up into small little pieces. You put most of the bait at the end where the guardrail is. This is where most of the bait is going to go. And then some of the bait you put here in the funnel, and in this funnel you put very little bait on the outside. You kind of stick it into the ground, kind of squash it down into the sand, kind of like it is on this blanket. And then you close the top by basically bending the top and folding a couple of these little spines over. They're not geniuses, these sparrows. They can get out, but they're not strong enough to break anything. And then you bait it, and then you wait. And then, um, depending on how you want to dispatch them, uh, we just shoot them right through the trap. So um, we just use a, a BB gun or a CO2 pistol or whatever you got. Be careful not to hit the sides of the trap because you can bend and break the metal. And that is how you make your repeating funnel trap. Sparrows cheap in, but they don't cheap out. But I'm cheaping out. Cheap, cheap. May all your hosps be dead. There's no good hosp but a dead hosp. It's your choice what to do with them, but the trap will work. Yep, okay, these hosps are about to be executed. Caught these in my trap earlier today, and the funnels, let's see, I'll zoom in for you. The funnels inside, see how that works? Those hosps. POWs are soon to be KIA. Just a basic trap for you right there. Two females. Likely juveniles. So, we're going to put these prisoners on death row to be executed. Goodbye, Hoss. Go ahead. Those prisoners are to be executed. A moment of silence. Did you get the hosps?
See that? I freaking hate this bird so freaking much. I just dropped the mother of all traps on them, the Moat, I like to call it. Look at all these hosps. You're fucking stupid, you're gonna die. God, I hate these fucking birds. There's some males in there, two males. Two males cheeping like a mother. Oh. Goodbye. Just on the eaves, not including the top, the gable, the upper portion of the house, uh, I counted at least 10 or 11 active nest sites. So, I don't have a problem personally with birds, even sparrows, unless they try to come into my house and take over. Then, then we have a problem. Good thing they don't make human traps. Or do they? And now we just caught some more hosps. Let me show you. Look at all of these hosps. A male. We got a male. That dark one in the middle here. Let's see. That one with the black face is a male. Right there in the middle to the left, down the middle to the right. He keeps hopping around. He's the one we want. They're big ones too. Say goodbye to these hosps. Goodbye hosps. Now go kill you some hosps. 